The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 24th chapter. Jesus said to the disciples, About that day and hour no one knows, neither the angels of heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. For as the days of Noah were, so will be the coming of the Son of Man. For as in those days before the flood they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day Noah entered the ark, and they knew nothing until the flood came and swept them all away, so too will be the coming of the Son of Man. Then two will be in the field, one will be taken and one will be left. Two women will be grinding meal together, one will be taken and one will be left. Keep awake, therefore, for you do not know on what day your Lord is coming. But understand this. If the owner of the house had known in what part of the night the thief was coming, he would have stayed awake and would not have let his house be broken into. Therefore, you also must be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an unexpected hour. This is the Gospel of the Lord. <clears throat> you may be seated. <clears throat> Life would be so much easier if Jesus would just give us the answer, right? <laughs> <clears throat> the truth is, we stay on our toes, so to speak, not knowing the answer to the question, when will Jesus come? In some ways, it's a good thing we don't know. Can you imagine generation after generation knowing they had nothing to worry about? <laughs> Jesus isn't showing up tomorrow, we're good. <laughs> but the truth is, we don't know the answer. Jesus could show up tomorrow. That actually is true of almost everything in our lives, isn't it? We really don't know what tomorrow brings. We have no idea what to expect two hours from now in our lives. Sometimes we are surprised in incredibly beautiful ways. And sometimes we are surprised in horrible ways. But one of the incredible blessings of life is that we never know what the next moment will bring. It keeps us on our toes. So Jesus says to us, be ready. Be ready for what? We don't always know the answer to that either. You know, there are so many people in our culture who have written books and essays and theology papers describing exactly what it will be like when Jesus comes again. And I have news for you, they're all wrong. <laughs> None of us know the answer. Jesus says that plain and clear. Not even he knows the answer to that question. The one thing he does say that is an absolute given in our lives is that he is with us, that he will come again, that we are never left here as orphans alone on our own. We have hope. We have hope. That's why the first candle that we light in Advent is the candle of hope. Because that hope is always with us. Jesus is always with us. We haven't been left here to figure out things on our own. We haven't been left here to guess 
although it is kind of human nature to try to guess. There's no reason for us to really be focused ever on that question of when Jesus will come again because he's here. He's here in the form of the Holy Spirit abiding within our hearts. His love lives within us. We are the body of Christ in this world. The world is not without Jesus. We haven't been deserted. We aren't sitting here worried about whether or not tonight's the night. Because Jesus is already here in our hearts in our souls, standing alongside of us, taking every step with us, hearing our every cry, sharing in our every joy. We have absolute hope because we haven't been left here alone. One of the most, well, I'll say it, one of the funniest things that I see in culture, and I say this as a pastor, you're going to be surprised at this one, one of the funniest things that I think I see in culture is this whole idea that there is somehow a war on Christmas, a war on Christianity and Christmas. I'm here to tell you, there is no law anywhere that says that you can't say Merry Christmas to somebody. You're not stopped. There is no law stopping you from coming here and praying anytime you want. There is nothing anywhere that has convinced Christians that we can't be Christ-like in this country. We have every opportunity to emulate Christ and to share the gospel. Because Jesus is here. The so-called war on Christmas and war on Christianity is about us. It's really easy for us to sit here and say, oh, we're being persecuted. No, we're not. We have every opportunity to be the body of Christ in our world. Don't take the easy way out. Don't sit here and say, oh, I'm not allowed to say Merry Christmas anymore. Because quite frankly, you are allowed to say that. And secondly, Jesus is much more interested in whether or not you feed somebody or clothe somebody or care for somebody than he is in whether or not you said Merry Christmas to somebody. And he is here. We have tons of hope. We have tons of reasons to believe the light is shining in our world, shining into our darkness, shining into our lives. Life is good. God is here. Emmanuel. That's what Advent is all about. God is here. Not out there. Here. And not just in this building. in your hearts, in our souls, sitting in the passenger seat of your car, standing next to you at the kitchen sink, with you at work, with you on the street, even standing in Black Friday sales at Target. <laughs> <clears throat> Everywhere you go, Emmanuel, God is with us.
Christ is with us. It's why we have this incredible hope. It's why the first candle of Advent is the hope candle. Because as Jesus describes this scene, this unknown time when he comes again, we shouldn't be scared. It's a good thing. It's a great promise. We haven't been left here to figure it out by ourselves. That's not God's intention for us. That's amazing. It truly is amazing. God has not just left us here. So as you go through this Advent season, please, I literally beg of you, don't get lost in the shuffle of whether or not Starbucks has Bible verses on their coffee cups and whether or not somebody said Merry Christmas or Happy Holidays to you. It does not matter. What matters is Jesus' presence in our lives. What matters is that Jesus tells us he's here. What matters is that we are the body of Christ and we get to carry this hope out into our world with us. Use the love in your hearts. Don't go through Advent looking at some time in the future. Go through Advent experiencing God here and now. Emmanuel. Experience God. That's Advent. Experience God. You live in relationship with the living Christ whose love is in your heart, who walks by your side, who hears your every word, who loves you no matter what. Experience Christ in Advent. That's what Advent is all about. That's where the hope comes from. Emmanuel, God with us. It really is amazing when you think about it. Thanks be to God. Amen.